Hello everybody. So we are recording this video with all the commas that we uh, we went through the, the first tutorials of uh, Hadoop where we cover uh, Impala and file formats and HBase. And uh, well, uh, first of all, what we need to do is get the file where we have all the commands. And this file we can we could get it from AFS, but we could get it also from SDFS in the TMP uh, folder. Uh, is uh, where the file is stored. So with the get command of uh, SDFS, we can get it get the file locally. We want it locally because we want to execute it. So uh, we can use the get command to get it locally from TMP, and the file is called tutorial follow up. And then we specify the destination of the file that will go will be our uh, our home directory locally. So once we have the file, we can execute with the file. We need to execute the file because it, it contains some, uh, it need to replace uh, our username in some part of the file. So we can just do sh and the name of the file. Well, we, if we place also the less command, it will make easier for us to, to start from the beginning of the file. So, well, in the step zero, we have written all the, the commands and the procedure that we have uh, followed in order to get first to get the data from the, from the streaming API from, from Meetup. And then moving, well, as you can see, as explaining during the tutorial, you can do it uh, first locally and then move the files to HDFS, or you can do it directly by piping the, the output from the streaming to the uh, directly to SDFS. And then by using Spark, that will be a tool that we will cover in following tutorials, uh, we have convert this data that is in JSON to Parquet. And then with Impala, we have created an external table with the, this Parquet data. And from this Parquet table, we have uh, created a CSV uh, table and uh, a create table as select, which, as select, which means that we will, uh, uh, in that case, select the, the the columns that we are interested in, and uh, also the data from uh, the, in that case, from Meetup Parquet uh, table. Once we got, uh, we create this table with the data. The underlying files are CSVs. So we merge them basically and we copy them to AFS. During the tutorial, we'll get the data from TMP uh, folder on HDFS. That is uh, exactly uh, the, same, the same data. So once we have... Uh, so let's go to the first step where we where we where we will actually uh, execute the commands and go to the Hansons and use the data that has uh, been prepared for for the tutorial. So first of all, we will create a database. Once uh, uh, the database is created, we will create tables. Uh, we will create a table with the CSV data that we are we are sharing with you, no? that is in that case located in the uh, temporary uh, temporal folder on HDFS. So the first thing that we need to uh, create is a, a directory on HDFS and in order to create the directory we can use uh, that uh, mkdir uh, a command of HDFS in order to create uh, this folder in within uh, our home directory, you know? since we the, the 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 path that you are we are specifying is not absolute. It will create uh, this uh, directory in our personal, uh, in, our, in our home directory. Once this uh, directory has been created, we need to grant access to everyone because uh, uh, Impala will access the data here as Impala user, and it needs to uh, write and uh, read data from this database. So we need to grant uh, access both for writing and reading to this directory. So, okay, we have created the directory, but we haven't uh, said to uh, Impala that there is a, a, a database. So we need to use the, inter the, the Impala cell, which is the interface with Impala, to um, declare what uh, 
the new database and say and say to Impala where it is located. No? So we go to the Impala cell and there basically we are connected with, with Impala. No? Uh, there we need to uh, say the name of our database since uh, everyone is using the same cluster the name of uh, the database should be uh, unique so we will create one per uh, user so uh, in, in my case uh, dlansa db underscore db and where we created the uh, the directory on sdfs that it was in our home directory slash the, the directory that we have just created so if we want uh, now to use the, the database just created, we should use the use command. But since we are exist exiting the, the Impala cell, we don't need, uh, it would be useless no? because once uh, you exit, uh, <coughs> it's not applied anymore. We will uh, later on, uh, once we we'll, uh, uh, issue again, we go again, to the Impala cell, we need to specify that we need to we want to use our <coughs> our database. So what we are gonna do now is create the 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 directory for our first table that will be in CSV and move the data to this uh, directory. In order to do that, we use the same command as uh, as we have used uh, before to create that directory. But in that case, within the uh, our, our the directory of our database so our table will, will be meetup csv and then what we need to do is move the data from or better copy that data from uh, the tmp folder that is where uh, the csv that we have created is uh, located so with uh, the cp column, command we need to specify uh, the source so uh, this uh, file is called meetup.csv and then we need to specify where it will go, so the target directory. So with that, we have uh, basically the underlying, the, let's say the HDFS layer is prepared to create or to declare the table on the Impala cell. So now, we will go to the Impala cell, but specifying our database. In that case, we haven't replaced uh, the username here, but with the hue-mi command, it will be replaced and it will go to, as we can see here, to our personal database. So right now we are using it, so the tables that we are gonna create is just uh, will be in our database and will be our personal tables, let's say. No? So now we will create the, the we will declare the table in Impala and this table will be external external because our table is not gonna uh, is not gonna we are not gonna create a, a table from scratch we have already data so as soon as we create an external table and we specify with the locate with location where our data is located. Uh, Impala will be able to read that, that data, but we don't. We don't only need to specify uh, that. We need to specify also the structure of our data because this is CSV and the structure is. Uh, I mean, our for, uh, file format doesn't contain the, the the schema, any schema or any structure. So we need to specify the fields and the the the, the columns and the type and the type of every every of these columns. And also we need to specify the uh, row format. So how every uh, how the file has been built. So how fields are terminated in, in our case by comma, since it's C CSV, the escape character that we are using and how lines are terminated. So with this uh, command, with this create external table, we can go to uh, the Impala cell, copy this, uh, um, um, uh, SQL uh, query and once uh, we have created we have issued this uh, query we can show tables and we will see our first table that is meetup CSV so from here we can already for example count the records that we have 
with cell count CSV. And we can see uh, how uh, Impala is already able to read the, the, the data from there. We have another examples of queries. So this is like the hello world. And now we have a query. So we made, we build up a slightly more uh, complicated query in order to show you that you can do um, more complex things no? as a nested query. Here with that query we'll get the 10 more, more interesting events, so the ones that uh, people are replying that they want to attend. Or for example we can also get the, 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 not, the not that interested ones, no? the less interested. And here we have um, many of them. So we have also another two queries, but the output of these queries uh, is much more interested, interesting if we go to the web interface that we uh, present during the tutorials to, to Hue. No? So if we um, uh, will copy that, the query, this query will get uh, for us the events that happen during this uh, time range and it will create a label that I will show to you in a second. So if we go to, to the Hue interface, we can go to the query editors and we can go to Impala. There on the left we, we will have our database. I, I already selected, but well, we can go uh, back and where is mine? The Lanza database. And there we have our table. So if we copy our query and execute it, we will get the list of events that happened during this time range. And the nice thing that we can go th uh, do through this web interface is plot the data. In our case, what we are getting in our, in our the results of uh, our query contains latitude and, lo and longitude. And as I mentioned, uh, a label no, that we have built out of some of the columns of the, of the, of the data that we have in the table. So if we go to result, we will see the results, but what we are interested in is in building uh, a chart. So we have different kind, kind of charts, and one of them is a map, where we can indicate uh, which of the columns is the latitude, which is the longitude, and a label. A label that, uh, is, uh, that will be assigned to every of, uh, of the events that we can, we can see here. So this label, you click uh, in that, and then some, since some meetings are are grouped, so it show the number of events that are happening in the place. So it's kind of a nice view of uh, of, of the results, no, that we get from uh, the query. So we have another table, another query that which results could be nice to, to show as well. And this uh, uh, query show us the distribution, sorry, we go to Hue, to the query editor, and this query will get us the number of events that are that take place on every hour of the day. So number of events that uh, take, uh, well, during the, every hour of the day, so some aggregation. So here we have from uh, 0 to 23 and the number of events per hour. So we can see how events are distributed al al along the day. Here we can build another type of chart, for example, a bar chart. And by specifying here what we want to represent in the x axis and in the y axis, we can see what we have mentioned, no? but in, in a more nice, uh, in an easier uh, view. Um, as we can see, many of them are taking place at the end of the day, more in the afternoon than in the morning, and during the night, not many of them, something that uh, makes sense. So, after, so this is what we want to show you for the step one, and now we will go for the step number two. So in the previous part, we have shown you how to ingest the data to 
uh, HDFS and how to build um, high for Impala table uh, out of the data that we loaded in CSV format. And in the rest of the tutorial, we'll focus how we can actually improve um, execution of our and optimize the resource utilization when we are executing the query. So we'll just focus on one query that was recently shown that um, was basically showing the, uh, the, the events that are happening within certain window of time. So first of all, to understand um, how you can optimize the resources, we need to understand actually where Impala uh, is spending time on, on what Impala is spending time on. So f first of all, what we can do actually is we can check what what is the size of our table uh, in, in in expressed in CSV format. Yes, we should. And this is the command um, to, to do so, show table stats. And what you can see that the, the total uh, size of a table is 159 megabytes, so it's 160 megabytes. For, and as far as you remember, the, this record, this table has only half million of rows. So the question is, whether we can optimize our execution by maybe reducing the size of the query, uh, the size of the table, uh, because you know storing the data on HDFS in a text file is very convenient, but at the same time uh, it requires a lot of reading because the, the text representation is not very um, efficient. So uh, there, there is also another comment that you can understand where Impala is spending time on. It is called profile. And you have to execute it just after executing your query. And profile will actually display you the execution profile for your last query that you executed in, the, in this console. So this, this profile is very verbose, but what interesting things you can find here is actually your execution plan. So what, what your query is uh, spending time on. Yes. Uh, and what are the steps? So f you can see they are ordered sequentially from 00, zero to zero 03. So in, ten in, in case of counting the records, you can see that first, first uh, step is just we Impala is scanning the data from HDFS. Um, and uh, this is, it scans 159 uh, megabytes, and then it does the aggregation, so it's counting the records locally, then exchange them between the nodes, because uh, the scan is happening on each node individually, then you need to join the, 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 the sub-aggregations into final one, and this is step number three, yes, the finalize. So, and here are already some statistics for your execution plan, you can see that the scanning was done only on two machines because, okay, the, fi the file is not too big, so there are only two blocks allocated for it, so only two, two machines could execute it. The same for the aggregation, but then for the exchanging, the only coordinator is doing it, so there is one node, and aggregate, final aggregation and displaying to the user is also only one node is doing it, the coordinator. So here you can see, actually, what time was spent on. So this is the average time per machine and this is the maximum time that one of the machine was using. So one of these two was actually scanning the, the data within uh, uh, 239 milliseconds. Okay, it's not much because we do not have much data. Yes, we have just half a million rows, but imagine if you have billions of rows, this will be already an issue. So we can see that most of the time right now we are spending on scanning the HDFS. The rest is um, Com considerably smaller. So that's why the first approach that we want to show you is we basically want to reduce our um, input set. So how we can do it? Um, there are many types of the file formats uh, available on HDFS and one of it is Avro and it's very popular. So Avro is basically a serialization um, protocol and it allows you to, 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 to 
easily serialize the data and of course you need to provide the schema for Avro just to make it more efficient. So with, with, HDF, uh, with Impala to, 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 to store the data with Avro is relatively easy. So this is actually the command you need to, 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 to run to create a new table that later will populate the data uh, with the data. And this table, it is, as you can see, it has already mentioned that we want to store it as Avro format. And we do not have to specify the list of the columns like it was in the, pa in the past we, in case of CSV because we put also another keyword like. So we are saying that our table has exactly the same definition like meetup CSV, except the fact that we don't want to use row delimited format, but just Avro. So let's create this, this table. So we go to our Impala. OK, the correct table is created. You can see it's not external anymore because we, this is a new table. So it doesn't have yet the data, so we need to load it, yes? So it's not like we cannot uh, reload the, the data in place into Avro format. We have to create a new table and populate them with new rows. There, there is one thing to remember is that um, actually Impala, the developers of, of Impala thinks that Avro is not yet the best format, so officially it is not supported, but by setting this flag, allow unsupported formats to true, you can really load the data into, in, into Avro uh, file format. And we'll do it by just... Uh, inserting directly from our CSV, like insert into and select everything from Meetup CSV. And we have to wait, okay, five seconds, and then we, we should have our data already in the uh, Avro format. Just to show you what is the size of the table right now. You can see that a new new directory was created in our database, which actually is the same as the name of the table. So this is the default location when you do not specify the location in the create table statement. Impala will create a new directory as a container for the files for a given table with the same exactly the same name as the, as the name of the table. You can see, already see that it is saying that it is in Avro format and. The size, you can see, also is actually half smaller. So right now, if we execute a command uh, and a query about um, about our time range, about meetups that, uh, that are happening within certain window of time, it should be pretty fast. Okay, comparing to CSV, we can run again. This is it was one second here, and in case of CSV, you see it is a little bit longer because okay, still we are just reading half of the uh, of the data set and there are also a lot of things that happening uh, there the time is spent on when we are starting the query but again we can sh see the profile when we are executing Avro and in the profile you can clearly see that um, okay in this case the average time was uh, half a second to scan so at most it was uh, half a second, but definitely we read much less data, which is written average per machine, it is written here. We just read 38 megabytes per machine, 
when if we do it in CSV, we can see in the profile that that average time was to scan it was a little bit uh, longer and this is because we had to scan per machine 79 gigabyte, megabytes so yes of course in as i already said uh, if if we are talking about uh, small data sets like in megabytes uh, it doesn't make a diff huge difference for the execution time but if we are talking about gigabytes and terabytes this will be a huge difference so uh, in this part we we have shown you that uh, actually by by writing the data into a different file format that, than text you can save a lot of space and also you can improve the query execution time okay so we have already shown that um, avro file format has um, a lot of advantages over just text format when you are storing data on, on your hadoop cluster uh, but we want to go further with the, our optimization because as you remember our query is just selecting by given time range and what we have seen in our profile before actually even though we are just interested in known uh, window uh, time window we are actually have to scan an, our entire data which in practice when we have terabytes of data you know it it won't be very effective and efficient, yes. So the, the goal of the, this, this part is actually to demonstrate you a um, partitioning technique that is available on Hadoop in order to prune your data before scanning it. So if we know a priori what, what data sets we are interested in, we do not need to scan our entire input set. We just want, we will limit it into uh, certain fragments, yes. So Impala by default supports partitioning and um, here we will show you how to create a partition table uh, in an Avro for file format. So in order to, 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 to create a partition table, you just execute more or less the same command like in case of Avro, so we need to specify the Avro uh, format you need to specify the schema and in addition there is this magic state uh, keyword partition by which actually adds another three in our case three columns uh, to it, those are virtual columns which will be the partitioning keys to our table so what does it mean exactly it means that we're going to partition our data by year by month and by day, because our our previous query was uh, basically looking for some time series, yes, within certain window. So we can already, and this is very uh, common practice that uh, if you have time series data, you want to partition them them by time. So we'll we'll basically partition the data by day as the uh, last resolution. So in order to to do it. We, of course, first of all, we, ha we have to create the table. So, we execute this command. Okay, the table is created. But as you can see, this table is empty, as usually. We need to copy the data to this table. So we need to, once again, duplicate the data. So it's empty, yes. No files, just a directory was created. Again, we don't have to execute this one as it was said in the previous step. Uh, Impala does not support Avro officially. And finally, we need to pro populate this table, yes. So here is um, that there's slightly different, uh, there is a slightly different um, DML statement because we need to include this partition keyword which means that okay we are inserting into partition table and this 
is mentioning to which partition and we need to always specify all the partitions that we are in inserting in. This actually causes the fact that all, all, all the last columns that we are selecting will be treated as a partition keys. Yes, so that's why first of all we are specifying all the columns we want to insert from meetup for, from our uh, previous table plus we need to extract from the time column and this is this is this it's here our partitioning key which actually will be year month a day yes so from the same column we need to actually implicitly say to impala please this record should end up in the partition which is um, derived after the time and this um, formula how to generate the 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 partitioning column you have to specify it manually. So here we are saying to this year, to this month, and to this day. So if we execute this this column, uh, the, this statement, it will populate all the partitions. So of course it will be semi-dynamically because there will be as many partitions created as we have uh, years, months and days. That's why it is taking a little bit longer. Yes. Okay, it was inserted so if everything went fine we can see in the show table stats that we have much more data to show because uh, table statistics are actually displayed for each partition individually. So you can see that the how it looks like in the path. So our table starts under this path, and then each partition has a dedicated subdirectory which is equal to um, to to our to our partition keys and there's values, yes. And you can see that each of the partitions is right now very small, so we have just kilobytes per day, yes. Okay, let's go to the bottom. And in total, of course, the size of an entire table didn't change much. So this is the number of files that were created, so which is more or less equal to the number of partitions that we have. Okay, so we have uh, our partition table. Then we want we can query the data with the partitioning. So let's go to our query. And execute. So if you look into the profile, you can see that in average right now we are selecting we are reading only 4 megabytes when in the past it was like 40 so we reduced by just applying the partition pruning the amount of data to be read by 10 times so this ultimately in decreased the scanning time and as you can see only one machine was used for the scanning because the data was so small that there was no need to to actually involve more machines so we also decrease the the footprint on the cluster by just applying this small trick with the partitioning one thing that is that is important to mention is that impala does not automatically do the partitioning pruning when you are selecting the uh, when you are putting the your time predicates so you need to explicitly mention your partition key in your query so like this, we, here we have here, we are specifying from which actually partition we want to uh, read the data from. Because if we don't do it, so I will just quickly demonstrate it, I, I hope. So if I remove this from the predicate, um, the partition keys, then there will be no pruning and we again will need to scan all our data. Yes, so I remove this. 
from the query. Okay. And you can see that we go up. Ah, this one is much bigger. This profile, but average fragments says that we had to uh, read 6.6, .6, but this one, uh, in in case of the um, in, in the case of partition table, much more machines were used because we have much more files. So anyway, the the um, the outcome is that uh, the total we had to scan entire set, unlike in the previous. When we just read the just our partition, which is four kilo, uh, more 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 or less four kilobytes. So let's go for this uh, fourth step, where we will see Parquet. As you, we may remember, Parquet is the a columnar store where the, the data for the same column for the same column is stored together, and it could make uh, that our queries. Uh, read much less data since it, since it will read only the data that uh, we are interested in. So uh, we will create a parquet table and it will be uh, partitioned as well, which means that we will use both horizontal partitioning and vertical partitioning because of uh, parquet. So in order to create the table, uh, what we need to do now is slightly change the query that we have used before for Avro, but in that case we need to indicate that the underlying files will be a parquet. So if we execute this statement in Impala, we will declare our parquet table, but now we need to populate it as we did before for uh, for the Avro table. So I, as explained in before, we need to extract year, month, and day, and we will get this data from uh, the, the Avro table that was created previously. So we populate the, our parquet table with the data from, from Avro. It will take a bit longer because of the partitioning. It will need to create a partition per year, month, and day. And once uh, it is finished, we can run the queries that we have uh, been running previously. We are, um, uh, let's say, more interested in the, in this time range uh, use case. And in, in this special case, it's quite important, let's say, the, the columns that we are selecting. Because it will be the data that will, uh, will be read and not the, uh, the rest of, uh, of them. No? In our case, also, the, the time column will be read because it needs to be read in order to filter uh, the rows that we want but only the data for the selected columns and for the ones that we have in the predicates the data for these columns will will be read no that is the the, the interesting part uh, part in uh, in the case uh, of parquet so if we uh, use our query for our new parquet uh, uh, table. We can see now by, <coughs> by using the, the profile command how uh, we have reduced the amount of data that needs to, needs to be read. So if we go to the upper part, uh, we can see that uh, only one uh, node, go, uh, one host was used to read the data since all, pro most likely only one file was in this uh, partition. And then we can see the amount of the data that needs to be read. That in that case is uh, only one megabyte. If uh, we remember previously, uh, four megabytes needed to be uh, read for for um, for Avro, no, it, it was for our partitioning table in Avro, but in our case, uh, let's say that the same amount of data we have in the partition, in the in the partition, but uh, only 
part of the of the data stored in the file need to, to be read in, in in that case one fourth of the of, of the data no? in that case it's not a huge uh, reduction well it's a, we are reading just 20 percent i mean it's not it's not a huge re reduction in time because uh, the times that the, the query takes implies uh, many other uh, processes but if we are talking about much more data imagine uh, gigabytes or terabytes it could uh, implies a huge re reduction uh, in the execution execution time by using parquet formats uh, file format we can uh, get uh, some other nice features not and uh, we can uh, uh, let's say profit from from the the the, the let's say how the data is stored in these uh, parquet files not Queries uh, uh, like a, a select count so can profit from from the, uh, this uh, file format because uh, in that case not not all the the data uh, needs to be read but only data for one of the columns. No, basically by knowing how many uh, rows are stored in the file, we can uh, get results for such uh, easy. Uh, Sorry, parquet partition for uh, the C for such a um, table, no? Uh, it will make it much uh, faster than with any other uh, file format. The last step on uh, of our hands-on will move away from HDFS a bit, and we show uh, yet another possibility which can improve your queries, uh, your processing of the data, your scanning of the data, um, even over parquet, yes? But this is only for sub, some limited subset of cases where, for example, like in our previous query, the query that we are commonly use, we are interested in time. So uh, for HDFS right now, parquet is the common one uh, format that is commonly used so uh, for H for the storing data on HDFS we definitely recommend to use Parquet but if we have time range uh, time series database uh, time series data and we want to query on this time we can profit from index which is available in Hadoop ecosystem by just using HBase. So HBase provides a possibility of indexing of your data by a primary key, yes. So we'll, I will quickly demonstrate without going into details what exactly HBase is, but we'll quickly demonstrate how you can actually profit from, from HBase to even make our, quer our query executed faster if we are interested for given time ranges. So first of all, HBase, of course, is an external um, dat uh, NoSQL database, uh, okay, external to Impala, but Impala is able to interact with HBase if we specify special bindings. So we'll talk about, late, about this later. Now I will just demonstrate how to create a simple table in HBase. So in order to do it, we will need to use um, HBase shell. So we quick we quit uh, Impala shell, we move to HBase shell, and then this is a command to create a simple, very simple without any compression uh, table in HBase. So what you have here is just the name of the table and the column four column families. Column families basically is a group uh, you have to tell to HBase um, in what groups you will group your columns. And this is all. You do not have to specify really... Uh, so you do not really need to specify your columns names here because um, HBase can have a dynamically changing number of columns within a given row even. So, I will once again execute is okay and our table is created it was very simple then we move back actually not to Impala but since Impala doesn't have full support of the statements 
to create bindings between um, between uh, Hive and uh, between um, HBase and Hive Metastore. Uh, however, uh, later it is able to query the data, but in order to create a binding, which is external table, uh, we need to use Hive directly. So this is a DDL statement that uh, creates an um, external table which will map to the to the table uh, in uh, HBase. So what you what you can see here is just you have all the, you have to specify all your schema, so all the columns that you have you want to use. And what is later important, instead of saying the file format, you specify the driver uh, that will actually uh, do the binding with HBase, yes? And for the binding, you need to specify a couple of parameters, which one is very important is the uh, HBase column mapping, which means that how you're going to map your columns from external table to two columns in inside of HBase, yes. So in the columns inside of HBase are always prefixed with the uh, uh, column family. So the things that we we create we specify when we are creating the table, we we, are, we also mentioning here. So we are saying to which column family our column will end up. So this is mapping one to one plus the first. Keyword is specified as a key, so because HBase is uh, uh, key value store, so we say that actually something extra that we created in our uh, external table in, um, in Hive is key will be mapped to really a key inside of HBase. Okay, so let's let's just execute this. It's really long. I will use uh, our database to place the external table. Okay, and then we have already the table created, external table that actually matches the the um, HBase table. So what we can do, we can even try the table in HBase is empty, so we are free to even try to select something to see if it works. Okay, there are no rows. Yes, we haven't populated. So now we're gonna populate the data with simple insert statement as usually we also execute it from hive because it works uh, at least for on our cluster on demonstration cluster faster than with impala so we'll also do the insertion what you have to see in the insertion that actually in definition of our external table we provided this extra column key which actually maps to the key in hbase table we need to construct it yes so we need to populate it with some values. So, and these values for the keys has to be unique. So, what we are doing here, we decided on what we want to, um, uh, how we want to, to form the key, and we decided that it will be a concatenation of a time, of an event ID, and modification time. So, we because each row has to have a unique. Um, um, row key, otherwise it will be deduplicated, so some rows will be missing. So key, okay, I think I did the typo. Yeah. So by running this, yeah, a map reduce job is starting because we are in Hive comparing to Impala. Hive is using. MapReduce backend, and uh, 
these MapReduce jobs will start uh, against our source data which we are using from Meetup CSV and we'll insert them in parallel to HBase. It should take no longer than one minute. Let's have a look. Afterward, what we can see is actually some of our data are dupli were duplicated. So also uh, because um, they were reduced by a couple of rows because they contained exactly the repeated rows. So also HBase is a way of deduplicating the data if you are using HBase. So 52 seconds. Okay. That's it for Hive. We'll move back to Impala shell. Uh, I will use the command from the script to connect. It will set already the And one thing which is important is because Impala is caching Hive meta store internally, so we need to ask them ask it to refresh it because we have created new table, this external table, which by default is not visible unless we do not refresh the, the Impala uh, cache, which we are doing just by invalidating the previous one. Okay, and then we can actually check if how fast is it, yes? So let's say we are, well, we are interested in in data from uh, given time range which is expressed in a unique timestamp. Yes, so we just say our key from HBase table. We are interested in rows that in HBase has the key between this timestamp and this time uh, this timestamp because in uh, in the key we have specified that the, the timestamp. Yes, it was kind of fast and actually if we look into the profile can see that actually accessing the database was really fast. So here you, you see that the execution plan is different because instead of scan HDFS we have scan HBase. Okay, average time right now was one uh, half a second, but we are asking for all the data with a star from this table. But if we if I execute it again, it should be faster because then the data are already cached on the Age based side. So right now it's, it was served from the cache, it was much faster. It was 77 milliseconds to scan the age base. And then you can see that here in the, in the execution, you can see what predicates were used to scan age base. So basically, the, 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 our query was looking for the keys between this and this. Yes, so the ones that we specify in the in the in the predicate. So again, coming back to our query about the events, actually it's the same, but with the dates, but without timestamps. So we are just generating timestamps in fly. It's again very fast. It's less than a second, just and also getting the data to from. H base was pretty fast, yes. It was 63 milliseconds. So as you can see, this one is the fastest approach to get the data by certain key. Uh, unfortunately, H base does not support at the moment the multiple indexes. So actually, we can only have an index on the row key. So you need to design it. And this means that your queries can run in the predicate only on this key on the, the row key, so we can have this only one, let's say, predicate. But if, if we have time series, the predicate is uh, normally based on time, so it's fine to use age base for this kind of cases. So this is the last step that we wanted to show. Thank you for watching. I hope it was useful to you. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us and uh, hope you will join our future tutorials which uh, 
which will uh, come in in the weeks.